Okay, so uh, we're going to do a quick demonstration for Kaiser Open Enrichment uh, on how to put on a 12 80 kg. So first step is just how to put on a 12 80 kg, and then how we or why we would need to do right sided or uh, posterior wall EKGs uh, when the doctor sees something suspicious on the first EKG we do. So to start out with, you've got 10 stickers, four of them go on the limbs, and then the other six are going to be kind of carefully placed on the chest wall here. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is getting the first two placed correctly. So they're uh, B1 and B2 are going to be right and left sternal border, the fourth intercostal space. And I'll tell you, we see a lot of people having variability on where those first two stickers are being placed. And they, they really have to be placed in the same spot every time, consistently from nurse to nurse or tech to tech, over and over again. The good news is, is most patients have a pretty strong landmark called the angle of Louis. that's uh, located right in the second intercostal space. And so when you find the angle of Louis on most of your patients, it's just a, essentially a bump where the maneuvering and the sternum come together. If you find it, you slide to the side in the angle of Louis, you're going to dump right into the second intercostal space. Bounce over to the third, bounce over to the fourth, and voila. You've got your right sternal border, and you're ready to put your first two stickers down. So I'll go ahead and do that to start out with. So V1 and V2 are going to be right and left sternal border at the fourth intercostal space. Good to go. Now, we typically go one, two, and then four. We skip three because it's going to be halfway in between the two. So four, you might be asking where that is. It's one rib down, fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line. Okay, so good. So we've got that wired. Find our midclavicle, put another sticker down. And then three actually just goes exactly halfway in between the two. All right? And then uh, five and six, we skip five again and we go to six. So six is going to be mid axillary anterior, fifth intercostal space. And then we're going to place our final sticker, number five, halfway in between those two as well. And this is a presentation for how to do a classic EKG, right? So that's the good news. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. One thing that does come up a lot is what you do with uh, women with pendulous breasts. Uh, and essentially, I think most people tend to use the inframammary fold. There's some research that suggests otherwise. Um, as long as the stickers are placed at the right height consistently over and over again, and you use the same you know, element of the inframammary fold you know, consistently, it's going to read the same. Where we get into trouble with EKGs is when the stickers are moving up and down, patients moving up in bed and down in bed, that's when we kind of begin to see troubles uh, with getting the EKG interpreted. One millimeter of deviation can make it suggestive of mild cardiac infarction, so it's important that we have great consistency when we put these on. Okay, so if your doctor um, <coughs> saw SDL, SD depression, for instance, in the inferior leads, which would be like leads 2, 3, and AVF, they might say, you know, I'd really like to get uh, a right-sided EKG. So I'll go ahead and put on these, these leads electrodes for you. All right, so we got four, five, and six here. All right, so right leg, right arm. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, so we've done our classic EKG, and it shows, for instance, ST depression in the, in the inferior, these 2, 3, and ABF, and the doc says, you know, I'm still really concerned this person's having an MI, I'd have to do a right-sided EKG. A lot of people might kind of freeze at this point and go, what? Wait, I didn't know there was anything other than a 12. 12's already complicated enough. The right-sided EKG is incredibly simple. You just have to know the theory. Essentially, all we're doing is we're taking the heart that's leaning this way, and we're taking uh, three, four, five, and six, and we're just basically making an exact mirror on the other side. So we're using the same technique of putting on the other leads, and then we're gonna switch three, four, five, and six um, actual electrodes to the other side. You can leave one and two in place, don't even need to move them. And then once you're done with that, you can just go ahead and put in comments on your EKG machine that it's a right side EKG so the cardiologist knows later when they review it. Um, I'll often even circle the uh, leads when I do it. So here's four, bump over one, <coughs> to five, five on midclavicular, done, halfway in between, and then I'll just quickly place my anterior midaxillary. Okay, we've got it. So then I would take, in order to do this, I would just switch these cables. So I'd come over here to this one. <clears throat> Excellent. So at this point, we've uh, switched our leads. I left one and two in place, didn't change the configuration at all. You need to, you need to reverse them. Um, so you can leave them in place, keep your limb leads, and just take three, four, five, and six, flip it to the other side. Research, by the way, has shown that actually V4 is the most sensitive, and some physicians will actually just ask for a switched V4 lead, which is nice. Just saves you a little bit of time. Another rule of thumb, by the way, with EKG leads, is the whole time they're in the ED, leave the leads on, don't change them. That way, the EKGs will consistently show from the same vantage point whether there's any deflection on the ST elevation or depression. 
All right, the last but not least is sometimes a doctor will see changes in the anterior leaf, which are represented by like B1, 2, 3, and 4, anterior septal. If they see depression in those leads, they'll often think about getting a posterior EKG in the back. So we've learned right-sided, that was a little more complicated. Posterior is also quite simple. Um, it's gonna use the same leads, four, five, and six, but this time, or if not using three actually in this case, we'll just use four, five, and six. And we're gonna go, for four, five, and six, we'll roll the patient, we'll do a posterior axillary line at the fifth intercostal space. Okay, then we'll do a mid-scapular, same fifth intercostal space, essentially running the ribs do curve in here. We basically try to just run it plainly right across and then a left paraspinal. And then I would take my same leads, four, five, and six. And now what were four, five, and six here becomes seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so I'm just gonna go seven, eight, nine. Same thing on your EK machine, machine, go ahead in comments and say this is a poster EKG. You can even circle the leads once it's printed out and write poster so that it's clear what we've just done and the cardiologists when they interpret it uh, aren't being thrown off by any changes. Okay. So that's how we do our toilet EKGs. I want to emphasize a couple points of importance. Patients need to be in a consistent body position throughout the EKGs. So doing a seated EKG followed by a prone or supine EKG, it's, it's not okay. The heart changes position in the chest, everything changes position, and you can really kind of obscure uh, pathology. So ideally, never much less than you know, 30 degrees unless the situation absolutely requires it and just know at that point that it's gonna be less sensitive. Other things that are really important, you know, <clears throat> pay attention when you're placing the stickers. They start at fourth in a costal space. Find that angle of Louis, bump down one to three, bump down two to four, and then, you know, place from there. Do it the same way every time. And the last thing I'll say about 12 EKGs is leave the stickers on for their entire ED state. That way, when the patient develops chest pain five hours into their stay and somebody says, hey, I need a new 12 lead, you won't have to go and put new stickers on, and you won't have any uh, variance between ED techs or nurses at that point, and you'll be able to get the same picture that they should have seen four hours ago, six hours ago, because you left the stickers on. That's an important kind of point to remember when they do develop changes later. Last but not least, come on over here. I just wanted to show you. There's a rhythm button here. We need an order to do a 12-bit EKG. We don't need a, a, an order at all to do this rhythm, and the rhythm is handy because it allows us to do a continuous rhythm analysis during something like a procedural sedation. You can see it'll just start spilling out paper forever until we press stop. No order is needed for that. It's a great thing to do during a, a conscious sedation for like therapeutic or electric, car electric cardioversion. And it'll give us like anywhere from one lead to 12 leads of continuous ECG output during the cardioversion, which will allow our physicians a little bit more of a picture when they're trying to, to ascertain what's happening with the rhythm. All right, that's it, 12 EKG, done.